All right, so let's get to doing an example and kind of you actually using the calculator. So the on button is going to be right down here. So if we turn that on, and then the first thing you're going to want to understand how to do is how to turn on the backlight. You can see these little light switches, and they're in yellow, which means we have to hit the the yellow button, the convert button, to convert so that all these keys will do the the things in yellow. So we hit that convert button, and then we hit. This one says no light, this one says light, then we hit that, you can see that the backlight comes off, and then we'd have to convert, hit the convert button every time we want to use one of these yellow things. So as you can see, we have all the functions listed here, and then we have the zero, so the key, and then whatever, and then each one of these, each one of these buttons is considered a menu, and it'll pull up the associated functions. And going back to our reference card, you hit one of these menu buttons and it will kind of bring up those functions. So in this example, we want to do find heading and ground speed. So this is as if we were trying to find a magnetic heading and a ground speed on the wind side of our E6B. So we're going to need, and, and the E6B is going to tell us what we're going to need, but we're going to need wind direction, wind speed, true air speed, and course, just like we would on the wind side of our E6B. Now, if you've seen my wind side of the E6B videos, you know that the course can either be a true course or a magnetic course. This electronic E6B just calls it course. They don't signify whether it's magnetic or true, and they don't do that for wind direction either. Now, in that video, I told you no matter what you use, whether it's true direction or magnetic direction, you just have to match throughout the problem. So most winds we get are true. If you read it, it's true. So if we read our winds from like a winds loft table or something, it's going to be in terms of true direction. So that's why I like to use true course when I'm doing the wind side of my E6B. And that's going to give me a true heading. And then at the end, I go from true heading to magnetic heading using variation. So just know that when we get heading here, it's going to be a true heading because we're using true winds and a true course. So let's do an example. And to do that, let's press this heading and ground speed. Now that we've hit that menu, that we have two functions under that menu. We have heading and ground speed up here, and then we have pressure and density altitude. We have two functions now. And we can go between the functions by pressing these arrow keys, and the one we're on is the one that's flashing. So we want heading and ground speed, so we're gonna hit enter. So now it wants a wind direction, W-D-I-R, that stands for wind direction. So in this example, we're gonna say that's 270. So we enter 270 and then we hit enter. Next, it's gonna ask for W-S-P-D, which is wind speed. And in this example, we're gonna do 20. 20 is already in there, but we'll type it in anyways. 20 and then we hit enter. Next, it's gonna want course. And remember I mentioned it doesn't specify magnetic course and magnetic or true course, but because our wind direction was in terms of true, we're gonna use our true course. And in this one, let's use 260 in this example. So we have the wind coming from 270 at 20 knots, and then we're flying a true course of 260. Remember, true course is what you measure with your plotter tool off your charts, your sectional charts. So if we hit enter, now the last thing we need is TAS, which is true airspeed. So let's do 135. Okay, so 135 for this example, or true airspeed. When we hit enter, it's gonna give us the ground speed right here of 115.3, and that's knots ground speed. And then it's gonna give us a heading down here of 261. And then right here, this number is the wind correction angle. And there's no minus. If there was a minus to the right of it, that would be minus one. But our wind correction angle is one. Now we don't really care about it because it's doing the calculation for us. It's taking our course and it's going, it's adding one, the wind correction angle. Remember, because when the on the E6B, when the wind correction angle is to the right, it's plus one. So that means this would be a wind correction angle to the right. So we add one to our course to get our heading. So 260 plus one equals 261. So we don't really need this, but it, they tell us that if we need it. And then this is, again, true heading. So what we'd have to do is we'd have to add or subtract our variation to get a magnetic heading. And then our ground speed of 115.3, anytime you use a calculator, whether it's a paper E6B or this electronic E6B, you want to make sure that the answer you get makes sense. 
Now, if we're traveling a course of 260 and our wind is from 270, that means the wind of 20 knots is almost directly in our face. So it's not going to push us to the left or right. It's not much of a crosswind. So the wind correction angle of just one is pretty small. So that makes sense because we're only 10 degrees off from where we're flying. It's almost a direct headwind. And then the 20 knots of direct head, almost direct headwind is going to slow us down almost 20 knots because if it was a direct headwind, it would slow us down 20 knots. So we're going a true airspeed of 135 and then our ground speed of 115.3 right here, that is basically 20 knots. So that makes sense as well. So again, this was the example for heading and ground speed, just like you would do on the wind side of your E6B, but we're using a Sporties electronic E6B.